Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dan, the voice behind that Kaito Dan, and welcome to my analysis slash review for the Ruby Volume 5 Blake character short. It's time that I go over the second short on the road to Volume 5. Though of course, a lot of what I say is just my own opinion, and you're more than welcome to leave yours in the comments down below. With that said, let's get right into it and see what Blake is up to. And can I start by saying that Menagerie looks goddamn beautiful? The Faunus Haven looked gorgeous already in its debut volume, but you can definitely see the level of detail and set piece design continuing to grow with each new volume. Right down to the muted colour palette for the low sun setting, and the very nice looking light mist that cloaks most of the marketplace. I especially love the various shots that help sell just how jam-packed Menagerie is, something Blake did mention last time out in regards to the lack of available space for the large population. Plus points as well for the top quality background characters too. So many unique looking models of different faunus traits and clothing and so on, and all fitting in very nicely for this bustling set piece. But of course, we gotta focus on a particular faunus making the rounds, Miss Blake Belladonna herself, who funnily enough seems to be checking out some Belladonna flowers. Nice touch. However, Blake's not the only person of focus in this short, as she reflects on a previous moment she shared with her former friend and White Fang ally, Ilya Amitola, the chameleon girl who was sent to spy on her last volume. Now, the short itself switches its focus between this discussion and events in present day, but I'll be focusing on Ilya's scene first just to keep things flowing nicely. So yeah, we got a flashback of these two talking near Forever Fall, the forest from the Black trailer. No clue on when this actually takes place in terms of the timeline, but it is still cool to see Blake's old design in the Maya engine, and we get to hear why Ilya joined up with the White Fang in the first place. Miss Amatola's reasons seem to be the same as Blake's, with wanting Faunus to be treated equally, though Ilya expands on Blake's question with answering why she's getting involved in the fight for equality when she can actually pass off for a human. She may be a Faunus, but her chameleon traits aren't as noticeable as, say, Blake's ears or Sun's tail. Even her spots could be seen as just a normal human skin trait and Ilya can keep tabs on her skin colour changeability fine enough, so if she wanted, she could avoid the hardships of being a Faunus simply by acting like a run-of-the-mill human. Interestingly enough though, Ilya was actually raised as a normal human girl. At the start, she lived in Mantle, Atlas's former capital, and her parents were alongside other Faunus in the dust mining community, which has been mentioned in the past to be a less than favourable place to be in, what with the health risks and Mantle itself having fallen far behind the new capital of Atlas that rules over the kingdom, profiting of the dust mining that often has Faunus working cheap labour as well, despite the risks to their working environment. Ilya's parents didn't want their daughter to be raised in a life like that though, they wanted better for Ilya, and thankfully, they did manage to pull it off, getting her into an Atlas prep school. On mention of that tidbit by the way, I think that's the first time that we've heard of a non-huntsman focused school in Remnant, though I guess that does make sense for those not wanting to take up that profession. Either way, it was Ilya's chance to break free and accomplish better for herself in that finer land, though it did come with a handicap. Going from rock bottom to the top of the food chain meant that she had to pretend to be a regular human girl, being forced to suppress her faunus elements just to avoid being mistreated while she makes the most of her time in the city of dreams as Ilya calls it. To pull this off without a hitch, she couldn't bring her friends to see her lower class home, there was no bringing up of her faunus parents, and of course she wasn't allowed to change her skin colour no matter what. Essentially, she had to make like her chameleon inspiration and blend in with her surroundings to survive, while hiding what makes Ilya who she really is. That's simply heartbreaking and a majorly difficult situation to deal with. It's rough enough having to be away from your parents just to have a healthy and promising future, but to live a lie about who you really are 
can't be easy, and it shows just how far some faunus may have to go in this unfair world just to seek fairer treatment and gain happiness. And what better place to hide who you are, even your special emotion charged powers, than the kingdom that infamously tried to enforce no artistic expression of emotions as law. Atlas may be the high tech mecca of the world, full of the rich and prosperous, but it is also the hotspot for emotionally cut off actions and individuals. Even so, Ilya embraced it. As terrible as the situation it may have been, it was a plan with good intentions, and surely Ilya could benefit more in the Atlas prep school than in some mineshaft. And it does sound like she was fond of what Atlas could offer her. It no doubt would sting to have to play along with the cruel comments and teasing that the other students directed at her kind, but if she can take that on the chin and come out the other side with a brighter future ahead of her, Ilya was willing to play the part and fully adapt to her human persona. Until an unfortunate event caused that plan to crumble. An accident in the mines led to many faunists dying, with Ilya's parents likely victims as well. As if that pain wasn't bad enough, the people that Ilya considered her friends laughed at the tragedy. They made fun of this horrible loss of life, and that became the straw that broke the camel's back for Ilya. The facade she had to act out was gone as she broke down into tears. Her emotions and her true identity on full display with her sobbing and her skin turning blue to match her sadness. The sight obviously freaking out those who didn't know who she really was. Blake herself recognises the unfortunate and cruel situation that Ilya was in and feels sorry for her friend. But then she learns that Ilya took her pain and her unbottled emotions and turned them into rage her skin turning red as she recalls breaking her former friend's teeth in anger. Oh damn, Ilya went from sweet and cute to intimidating and vengeful in a flash with that reaction, justified as it may have been. Though what can you expect from someone who's voiced by Persona 5's Makoto? Also, did you catch her eyes turning blue when recalling her Atlas friends laughing? It's very subtle, but it's an effective way of letting the visuals speak for themselves in terms of giving off emotion. Regardless, up until this point, you could actually see a lot of similarities that the two Faunus girls share. Both have seen injustice in the world, both wish for a better life, and both are willing to act rather than sit idly by and let someone else make a difference. But while the two share those aspects and goals, they've taken different paths in hopes of changing the situation, one better and one for the worse. Blake's always being driven to spark a change of peace for everyone, but we know now that Ilya has the pain she experienced as her motivation, and that makes her all the more dedicated, yet dangerous. After all that time of trying to blend in, she's through with hiding who she is and bottling up her emotions. She isn't shy of being openly aggressive after what she's been through. But even though those actions may make Ilya feel better, it won't make the strained relationship between the humans and the Faunus improve. Fear and anger won't influence peace. It will only cause more conflict. More on this later, but as this chat is going on, we see in present day, Blake is joined by Sun for what seems to be some sort of mission. It seems like they're using the scroll that they managed to grab off Ilya in their last encounter to hunt for a White Fang member in the marketplace, perhaps to try and gain more information on the plans that Adam's Lot are making for their next attack in Mistral. However, the scaly troublemaker catches note of the two closing in and fires off some shots before running off, with the two giving chase. Some very solid running animations here as the runaway makes for the alleys, but not before trying to buy himself some time with a cart roadblock. It's Sun though to the rescue, using his continuously visually improving semblance clones to slow the car down, letting Blake swing her way back up to the slippery bugger for the lasso takedown. But before she can squeeze some info out of her target, Ilya makes her reappearance to let her ally go. 
things get tense, just like last time out, as the two try to get to grips with the obvious emotional tug of war going on in their heads, seeing their old friend on the enemy's side. But even though Illy has the perfect chance to shoot Blake down, there's still a side of her that still sees Blake as a friend, and she holds back from a fight once again, opting to cause another diversion to slip away for another day. Interestingly though, Blake doesn't mention Ilya's appearance when Sun catches up, just saying the bloke got away before she walks away. Clearly, the situation with Ilya is weighing heavily on her mind. It still hurts seeing someone she considered a friend be her enemy, and knowing her honest intentions makes it sting to see Ilya a part of this corrupted White Fang. Not only that, but Sun did say that the next time he runs into Ilya, he wants to get even for his wounds. Obviously, Blake would rather prefer the two never come to blows again if she can help it, but if Ilya keeps getting in the way, Blake will have to harden her resolve if she ever hopes of changing the White Fang, even if it means fighting those she once considered her friends and allies. And from this look on Ilya's face, you can definitely see that same sadness still remaining in the Chameleon Girl. She definitely liked Blake a lot to trust her with such personal topics, like her past and her reasons to join the White Fang, and while she too hates to see her former friend on the opposite side, she's loyal to the group and too emotionally invested to abandon its cause when it affects her own so much. Next time out, she too may have no choice but to fight her former friend, if it means her cause can still continue. Something for both parties to consider until next time, as the short ends with Ilya making her escape. Well, I say the short ends there, but we actually get a snippet of a new vocal track, along with new promo art for Blake. And thanks to some lyric clarification from Flint of Ruby Nation via Jeff Williams himself, this song, titled Smile, sounds very much like a piece that's focused on Ilya. The small verse pretty much recalls a lot of what we could already gather from the talk about Ilya's time in Atlas, and a very hard-hitting, vengeful tune. The lyrics become an, a statement of intent to make those who laughed at the Faunus's pain and sadness know their own kind of suffering, when Ilya's sweet, teeth-breaking revenge makes them and anyone else who mistreats her people pay. Well, that was a surprising direction the short took, though hardly one I was disapproving of. The obvious comment that many are making is this was less of a Blake short and more of an Ilya short, which, while that may sound as a negative for a video titled Blake Character Short, I actually found this direction incredibly entertaining and worthwhile, and it did still benefit Blake as much as it did Ilya in terms of a character insight. With Blake aiming to confront the White Fang head on this time, this arc needed to gain from seeing more noteworthy characters within its numbers and their exclusive reasonings for why they do what they do, good or bad, especially with Adam becoming a singular issue by himself. So far, any standout members have been portrayed as straight up villains with no real aspect to them that you could see Blake growing attached to, or nothing to them that helps avoid the group being seen as nothing but rotten to the core, each and every single one of them. Which would mean we would miss out on extra amount of emotional drama, seeing Blake confront her past and trying to change the group for the better. We know the White Fang started out as a more peaceful organisation than it is currently, so there's bound to be some people within the group, who even with all the mayhem that the group causes, still remain a part of it because of the good they personally aim to accomplish, or the suffering they wish to end after experiencing it firsthand. That way, it can add more complexity and more moral grayness to the actions of some of its members, that sadly has been lost in the group after they've been mostly been used as enemy fodder. They are still people who are willing to actively seek change in the world, so seeing some humanity behind the mask can do great for the upcoming challenge Bleak will face trying to reform the group, and thankfully, Ilya's inclusion looks to be fulfilling that role already with great effect in my eyes. While she has caused some damage and is unquestionably an antagonist as of this moment, 
This short allowed us understanding of her actions, why it is she's still a part of this group despite the terrible harm it's making, and why she's pained to see Blake as an enemy rather than an ally. She's a product of the torment and racism and the cruel hand that fornices like herself can be dealt with in this world. A sweet girl who dreamt of a happier life was given a chance among the better off, only for a horrible twist of fate showing her so much of the dark side to humans that it painted humanity collectively as nothing but a cold, selfish race, crushing any initial hopes for equality that she may have had. Because of this flashback, I know now what she's gone through. Her pain and anger is justified. There's a victim behind that mask, not a monster. And I'm legit heartbroken to see she had to suffer like she did. Not just with her losses, but also having to take such drastic measures, hiding who she really is, just to even have a second chance at peace. And as a result, she's become an understandable and likeable character despite being an antagonist. A bad guy with an honest, regrettable pain fueling her actions down the wrong path. We can also better gauge now the impact that Blake left on Ilya when she deserted the group. After losing her family, her fairy tale chance in Atlas, and now someone she trusted and connected to strongly, all she had left was the White Fang. A group that was surely not the right kind of environment for Ilya to be left alone with, with her highly strung emotions still bubbling. Perhaps if Blake stayed, she could have helped keep Ilya on the straight and narrow, even as the group was turning sour. But alas, Blake did have to cut loose, a decision that feels even tougher to make knowing another element that Blake was likely crushed to have to abandon. Seeing more to Ilya also helps see the potential inspiration behind some of Blake's actions in Beacon. I wouldn't be shocked to find out that Blake took the idea of hiding her faunus traits and creating a new persona within the human community after being inspired by Ilya's past, right down to being extremely distant with others so she could avoid any pain herself should her disguise be revealed. This is what I mean by my understanding of Blake as a character benefiting from this short through the heavy insight on Ilya. As concepts established in the past can now be seen under a new light with better context and emotional weight. I can see new layers into such things as why it was Weiss's attitude that would cause Blake to lose control of her emotions, and why she ran away so quickly to avoid experiencing the same ramifications of the reveal that Ilya had because she was influenced by Ilya's own struggles and heartache, an event that shaped Ilya into a vengeful, wounded girl, something that Blake would no doubt wish to avoid becoming herself. It's gonna be very interesting as well, seeing how Ilya will react when she finds out that one of Blake's best friends is the former heiress Weishnee, daughter to the dust industry's top dog, who has grown more accepting of Faunus thanks to her time with Blake. If Ilya can perhaps see how Weiss has changed, perhaps it's not too late for Ilya to see the good in humans after all. Unless Ilya's hatred is so deep and so cutting that seeing her former friend be buddies with the daughter of one of the biggest enemies to the Faunus kind would cause her to lash out once again and forget about her ties to Blake. And of course, there's the squabble going on between her and Sun that would likely add more tension to the already strained relationship with Blake. The Monkey Boy did make that comment about Ilya not looking like a faunus, which, in hindsight, probably stung Ilya a lot with those emotional wounds still there, after all she experienced because of that benefit to her appearance. Ilya's quickly become a fascinating character, a much needed breath of fresh air to the White Fang situation, and see more context to Blake's actions through additional insight into Ilya, for me, is one of the biggest positives that I can take away from the short, and I highly praise the crewbie for pulling that off while still doing their best to explore someone else's character and their nature. Ilya, by the way, was fantastically performed by Jeremy Lee. For such a big moment of focus for this still relatively fresh character, Jeremy definitely brought out the right level of believability to Ilya's wide array of emotions, so major props for her performance, and I cannot wait to see more from her as the series continues on. 
Big praises as well goes for the glorious lighting effects for the stunning menagerie setting, and also for those little touches of visual expressions and movements I mentioned previously with Ilya that help showcase a character's nature in ways words can sometimes find difficult to do smoothly. Another example of this being some of Sun's animations, like when he uses his left arm to keep his balance as he widely turns the corner during the chase, or how he still likes to use other people as a kicker for his jumps. Small quirks like that can still tell you a lot about a character's nature, and I appreciate seeing this trend continue. Overall, this short was a surprising, but a much welcomed insight into a character that I feel will be extremely very entertaining to watch. We're given due reasoning to feel bad seeing Ilya and Blake on different sides, with the already wounded Bond being all they have, stopping them being true enemies. And while the chasing didn't do too much in terms of the importance of the events, it did still at least show that things aren't going to be easy for Blake and Son, now they're actively confronting the White Fang instead of trying to avoid the group, which no doubt means more of Blake having to cope with who she used to be as she journeyed for a better world for all folks, humans and faunus alike. And who knows, maybe one day Ilya might be able to turn a corner, but for now, we can definitely expect some more tension and drama whenever the Comedian Girl makes her appearance to stop Blake's actions. And that's everything I've got for this short. Super happy with what it offered, and it's making me buzzing for what lies ahead in Blake's next chapter of her arc. But these are just my thoughts and opinions. What about you lot? Did you like the short? What's your opinion on Ilya? And are you excited for the Yang short? Leave your comments down below, and while you're at it, hit the subscribe and bell buttons to make sure you get every new video from me as they drop. And follow me on Twitter, where I post more on Ruby, future content, and more. For now though, we got one last stop on the Hype Train Express, heading towards Volume 5. Next stop, Yang Central Station. Until then, have a good day or good night, and peace out.